down through the years, men and women have turned to the Bible to help them through the dark hours of disaster and despair. In it, they have found a message of comfort and hope and strength. The strength to endure unbelievable grief and suffering. The faith to offer their lives and the lives of their loved ones that truth and justice and liberty may be established and preserved for the generations to come. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. In this total world war, touching as it does the lives of millions living far, far beyond the battlefront, as well as the millions fighting the war, interest in the Bible has reached tremendous worldwide proportions. Recognizing this constantly rising demand for the scriptures all over the globe, the American Bible Society has assumed the task of trying to supply them wherever they are wanted. This large task adds to the normal work of the Bible Society several special services. A special edition of the New Testament has been prepared for all branches of our armed forces. This is a continuation of an historic service inaugurated by the American Bible Society and continued through all the wars in which the United States has been involved since the Society's founding in 1816. Requests come from all over the world, wherever our fighting forces are stationed, and as soon as they are received, the books are packed and shipped. The Testaments go to Alaska, Australia, Africa, China, wherever the call comes from. In accordance with its customary policy, the Society distributes the Testaments through service chaplains with the request that they be given out to those who really desire them. The chaplains send their request direct to the Society's headquarters. Sometimes they are given out after or during church services, sometimes in personal interviews. It doesn't matter whether it's a training base or a battleship. The American Bible Society sees to it that there is a supply of scriptures to be had for the asking. Men in hospitals are especially receptive to the healing comfort which comes from reading under these conditions the matchless story of our Lord's ministry to the souls and bodies of men. Thousands of specially imprinted Gospels of Mark have recently been given to wounded lying in West Coast hospitals. Facing the grim realities of war, our fighting men find assurance and comfort in the words of the Bible, as in regular chapel services such as this. Even at the fighting front, the chaplains hold impromptu services or Bible classes with the aid of these testaments. Or it may be that the ordeal of waiting, waiting for the attack to commence, for the order to advance, is made easier for some boy. Men rescued after drifting for days on life rafts and lifeboats have stated that prayers and the reading of passages from the Bible brought them so much comfort and courage and hope that now many lifeboats carry testaments in waterproof containers as a part of their equipment. More than 30,000 have been so supplied by the society. Thirsty, hungry, sun-scorched men have clung to life and sanity by reading and listening to familiar passages from the Bible. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. 
Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. The supplying of scriptures printed in their own language to unfortunate refugees uprooted from their homes, straggling along the highways, herded into concentration camps, is another special service undertaken by the American Bible Society. Many such despairing ones have found new hope and courage from reading the book which has served men in this way for countless generations. Although these are French refugees, they are reading a passage which speaks to the hearts of all men in time of trouble. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye love me, keep my commandments. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In serving prisoners of war, the Bible Society makes no distinction of race or nationality. It has served men of the Axis nations as well as those of the United Nations. The scriptures have thus been distributed in 32 different languages. Thousands of prisoners in Germany, Italy, Africa, the United States, and in the Far East have received scriptures sent directly by the society's offices in Geneva and New York to chaplains, individual prisoners, and YMCA secretaries. Testaments are being sent to American prisoners now being held by the Japanese. In the hard, dull monotony of a prison camp, reading the Bible not only replaces stupefying inactivity with healthy-minded thinking, it brings the sense of the presence of God, of fellowship with loved ones, hope and courage. A special binding machine has been sent to London to replace the one destroyed by Nazi bombs. Although the war makes such help difficult, the American Bible Society is aiding other Bible societies in every way possible. Before the Japanese invasion, paper and funds were sent by the American Bible Society to the Dutch East Indies. In spite of war difficulties, the Bible Society's office in Geneva has been able to maintain a small flow of scriptures in France, Hungary, Belgium, Italy, and Czechoslovakia. Because of the war-torn conditions in these countries, the American Bible Society makes every possible effort to help continue the printing and distribution of Bibles among people who need the Bible now more than ever before. Work in China is being carried on under extreme difficulties. In spite of the terrible havoc wrought by war, there is a great eagerness for scriptures. Yet the American Bible Society carries on, keeping offices open even in bombed areas, often at grave personal risk and acute discomfort. Scriptures are being broadcast by every available means, by wheelbarrows, bicycles, rickshaw, ox cart, trucks, trains, junks, steamers, and planes. Neither difficulty, peril, nor cost must stand in the way, for never before in the long history of Christian work in China has the need and the opportunity been so great. As regular readers of God's Word, Generalissimo and Madame Chiang Kai-shek are setting an example which is bound to have a vast effect upon the Chinese people. Hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of people in lands which have been ravaged by war are going to want this book of life badly when the conflict is over. They want it now, but the obstacles are too many and too great to get it to more than a few. Now is none too soon to build up the stocks of books in all the languages necessary so that there may be not a minute's delay when the shipping space is to be had and the proper moment arrives. A conservative estimate shows a need of at least 600,000 Bibles and 1,200,000 Testaments for the countries of Europe and Asia most seriously affected. 
the cost will be nearly $850,000. If you and your church have not already given to help meet this need, please add your strength, for it is you alone that can provide the means. And for the boys in our armed forces, an estimated $200,000 is needed now to help continue circulating the testaments which mean so much. To our soldiers, to our sailors on our fighting ships and at our training bases, to Christians everywhere. I will read to you from Psalm number 91. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him. the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of the righteousness. Bible is bringing a message of comfort, of hope, and of moral guidance for the future and the faith in God which can make the world for which mankind is longing. Let us help it do its work. Oh, God.